Hey, what's up? This is Jason Kirk here for Odds Checker here to pick some January 2nd bowl games. First up on the day, we have Kentucky NC State Gator Bowl. The spread there has been Kentucky by about two and a half, which seems pretty close to on the money to me. Not a whole lot of value to be seen either way. The number that we like here is the under, under 51, um, based largely on the way Kentucky plays football, which Kentucky is good at basically one thing. They just run the ball until the game's over. Just they, they want a nice short game, not a lot happening. Defense not having to do a whole lot of work, just in and out, get the game over with. Perfect. That's perfect for team under. NC State likes to throw. They're not super up tempo. They're not really great at offense. They're just, you know, they're pretty decent at throwing. They're uh, on defense. They're decent against the run. Perfect. That could mean lots of long, grueling Kentucky drives. It just chew up clock. Just give me a 19 play Kentucky drive and let's let's uh, yeah let's let's cash this under. Second in the day, we have the complete opposite football game. We have Indiana Ole Miss in the Outback Bowl. I'm taking Indiana by six and a half. Indiana is seven and zero oh against the spread this year. Ole Miss is four and four and five against the spread. Um, both teams make a lot of big plays, give up a lot of big plays. The biggest defense is that Indiana's defense is good at some things, whereas Ole Miss's defense is terrible at everything. It's been one of the worst in the country at basically every category. Indiana likes to throw pretty aggressively, and that is one of many things that works well. Pretty <laughs> works pretty well against Ole Miss. The concern is Indiana is without starting quarterback Michael Penix, but it's Ole Miss. Look at the full list of quarterbacks they've struggled against. I believe in just about anyone against Ole Miss's defense. And if Indiana decides to just run the ball, that is a thing that has also worked well against Ole Miss. Basically, this entire bet is Ole Miss is only half a football team. A very exciting half, but only half. Uh, next pick up, Ohio State, Oregon in the Fiesta Bowl. The line here is bounced between three, four and a half, something like that, in favor of Iowa State. And I don't have a strong feeling in that where anywhere in there. I'm going to go with Ohio, uh, Iowa State money line, just oh, I, Iowa State straight up. But uh, one team's played 11 games, one team's played six. I don't know how to compare these things in detail. <laughs> uh, you know, if I had to lean one way or the other, I might take Oregon. At this point, four and a half, I might take those points, but uh, just, just just say Iowa State wins. Uh, they don't have a lot of clear weaknesses, while Oregon might not be all that good on defense, as far as we know. Uh, you can probably run on, run on them, particularly on first and second down, which that is what Iowa State likes to do. They Just very basic uh, in terms of uh, run pass tactics, run on first down, run on second down, throw out of it on third down. Um, let's say the clones win a pretty close one and we all go home a little bit confused about why Indiana or Coastal Carolina wasn't in this game. It is what it is. And finally, in the Orange Bowl to close down, January 2nd, uh, I have already grabbed UNC plus a touchdown against Texas A&M in the Orange, and it is now up to 7.5, so yeah, 7.5 it is. Um, A&M's pretty good at everything. UNC is less balanced, might be awesome on offense, probably just okay on defense, so this is a bet that UNC just has the firepower to score on almost anyone. Only once in 11 games has UNC's offense looked even average, and that was against a playoff team, Notre Dame, such as, a, <laughs> you know, and if A&M wants to make the case that they were indeed a better choice for the playoff than Notre Dame, well, hey, how about a common opponent, right? Um, A&M's had some random off games on both sides of the ball. Offense did not show up against LSU. That is a team against whom your offense is supposed to show up. So A&M's been a little bit shaky at times. Um, I think one of the main battles to watch is also, you know, when A&M has the ball. UNC likes to blitz big on third and long, aggressive on both sides of the ball, UNC. Whereas Kellen Mon for A&M has been really solid against the blitz. So that could tell a lot of the, uh, the story here. So UNC is this big, aggressive team that does the takes big swings all over the place. But U usually ends up being about the same. All those big gambles tend to pay off in a pretty, pretty, pretty reliable way. Well, A&M is this straightforward conservative team that ends up all over the place. Um, I don't know what to make of that. Let's say the heels keep it pretty close in a fun one. And that's it. That's the end of January 2nd in college football. The season is almost done. So good luck the rest of the way, y'all.